Now, those who protected themselves with hard assets survived the hyperinflations and currency resets mentioned above. In an earlier video, we analyzed how Hugo Stines became the richest man in Germany throughout the 1920s German hyperinflationary event. Now, Hugo borrowed money in the failing currency to buy income-producing businesses and hard assets like real estate and gold. This is an important lesson to learn that could help you weather the coming fiat tsunami. Buy hard assets, but don't use leverage or use it at least very responsibly. The volatility will be insane, but those who can surf the waves will come out at the end of the period on the right side of what could be the greatest wealth transfer in human history. You need G'day Parcetos, welcome to the greatest wealth transfer in history. My name is Sam, uh, and that is a video uh, from Mark Moss. I recommend his channel. Um, he's actually just uh, shown a tour of his uh, property. Uh, he's getting ready for this global supply chain crisis that's coming. So there's a lot of macro factors in play right now. So I think now would be a great time to share some of the strategies that I'm doing uh, to navigate uh, this great reset. The transfer of our global systems onto the blockchain. So as we experience record inflation across the globe, uh, the thing to do is to acquire cash flowing assets, whether it's businesses or real estate and making sure we have some, some gold and silver. Right now, I wanna give you a heads up into the, the new direction that I'm going with, into. Um, over the past couple of years, I've been diving very deep into the digital unknown. And I think it's time that I start sharing uh, more of my journey in that space. Uh, now, I'm not a, uh, a blockchain expert or a financial advisor, so please do your own research. None of this is financial uh, advice. You might consider it edutainment. Uh, I'm going to continue going on adventures, just as I have uh, with a motor motorbike and a drone, uh, you know, getting around Colombia. I'm gonna be diving into some of the, uh, the deepest parts uh, of the internet. The simplest way that I can describe crypto is a network of databases. The differences between mm, this uh, network of databases and the network of databases between the Fed and the Treasury uh, and Wall Street is that these databases are uh, open and transparent and decentralized and immutable. Immutable means unchangeable. So uh, these databases store very accurate information that can't be corrupted. And that is uh, what I believe uh, has the power to restore our trust. And I think if we're not aware of what's happening, we're going to be led into these central bank digital currencies, which uh, we have to have a tremendous amount of trust um, to use because these currencies will be able to be controlled um, depending on uh, what type of posts you're making on social media, as long as they're in line with the party narrative uh, you'll be able to spend and use that uh, those coins freely you may even get a uh, universal basic income uh, that is distributed to you algorithmically uh, but let's say there's another variant that happens and another lockdown uh, needs to happen in order for public safety uh, you may be limited uh, to purchase bus or plane tickets uh, in that event and that will give tremendous control uh, to the people uh, who are uh, administering each nation. So there's some big things to be, uh, to be aware of uh, that are happening right now. I think we're either going massively into these central bank digital currencies or we're going to start to adopt uh, much more decentralized systems. Now, El Salvador has chosen uh, that more decentralized option of uh, of implementing uh, Bitcoin as legal tender. So where does that leave us? Where does that leave me? Uh, in a lot of ways, since the pandemic, um, I'm starting from scratch. And 
with a fairly humble crypto portfolio of about $5,000, I've been able to support an international lifestyle over the past two years. I've been able to 20X my portfolio. That is a tremendous uh, return considering you know, a great investment in, in real estate uh, might generate 10% uh, ROI. So over the past couple of years, I think I've seen uh, enough to start sharing with you some of the plays that I'm making and also helping you uh, get the skills and the awareness that I believe we could all do with right now. I've actually, um, I'm actually part of a group who is educating DeFi skills called AR Crypto. Uh, there's a link in the description if you're serious. Uh, about learning the skills in order to navigate this environment, I highly, wholeheartedly recommend uh, this program. I'm happy to jump on a call and walk you through my own experience about what that entails and what that means. Um, in the meantime, I just want to give you a heads up because I am diving uh, uh, deep into this environment. We're witnessing a mania just like we did in the 90s. And 98% of those companies didn't, uh, you know, end up fulfilling their, their visions and their, and their speculation of how they were going to change the world, right? It was the 90s, the internet came along, uh, email came along, and then every website that uh, proposed, uh, you know, how they were going to change the world got ridiculous investment. And we're seeing exactly that same thing in crypto. So because I'm in a, uh, in a hyper aggressive investment uh, mode right now, I am diving very, very deep. And a lot of the, the keys to making the right plays in this environment is getting early uh, into the right networks. And, you know, I mentioned that the way that I'm describing cryptos is networked databases. We can now own um, not only the equity uh, of the brand of these databases, but we can actually own the code, the infrastructure of the databases ourself. And we can actually uh, do things like provide liquidity and start earning, um, earning uh, uh, transaction fees. We can start uh, staking our code, which is locking our code as a node in that network. And we start validating information on that network and we can actually start generating uh, passive income and so far i've i've got about 15 different streams of of passive income uh, i certainly need to uh, to grow those and i'm going to be sharing with you uh, my adventures uh, of how i'm doing that uh, a few months ago i shared with you uh, two plays one of them was uh, staking hex um, one that I wholeheartedly believe in. Um, they're actually uh, coming out with the Pulse Chain. Um, the Pulse Chain is a fork of Ethereum. Ethereum is the largest uh, virtual computer network uh, out there right now. They've copy and pasted that entire network and they've uh, converted it into a proof of stake. So it means it's going to be very cheap and fast to do uh, to do business, to do transactions on that, uh, on that blockchain. So I'm very bullish on that whole ecosystem. Uh, and so I did a stake for two months. I'm going to extend that. Uh, I'm going to get more organized so I can show you better what I'm doing and the moves I'm making. Uh, but the, the Pulse chain, uh, the Hex and the Pulse swap ecosystem, very bullish on, uh, as well as the Cosmos ecosystem which is, uh, uh, the symbol is Atom. Uh, I also did liquidity providing between uh, Osmos and AKT. Uh, I'm gonna be doing more in that ecosystem. That play has actually uh, three to four x since I made that video. Um, not, not from the price of uh, the tokens, but from airdrops because these are emerging systems, and I'll show you what the, uh, what the Cosmo system looks like, uh, this here, uh, each one of these are projects, and they are networks in themselves. So the networks are a node of the Cosmos network. When you own the Atom uh, uh, token and you stake it, you actually provide value 
to that network. And when new projects are released on that network, those projects are gifting tokens to the people who have added value to the Atom network. So staking Atom, staking Osmo, and staking Juno, Secret, uh, a few different, uh, a few different um, uh, projects there uh, has been very, very beneficial. And I've actually done about a 3x. Uh, I've tripled the value of my uh, uh, Atom portfolio just by staking, just by locking it into that system. So incredible amounts of opportunity. I know this is a, a new direction for a lot of you who are used to seeing me on a motorbike with a drone, showing you cash flowing, uh, uh, Airbnb renovations uh, in exciting places around Colombia and Puerto Rico. Um, I may eventually return to real estate. I know I will. But for now, I am very focused on environments that are frictionless. And by frictionless, I mean that a lot of people are looking at crypto and they think it's just about finding a new currency. It's not just about uh, a new currency or even a new financial system. This is far, far greater. This is a new way uh, to program. It's essentially a new internet. It's a new social network. Um, it's a new way to host our information online, to interact online. Um, this is a game changer in, in, in ways we can't even imagine right now. And so when I'm looking at, okay, how, where and how can I invest aggressively right now, I'm not looking at trying to pick the next currency that uh, the, the legacy system is going to adopt. I'm not looking at, um, you know, right now, real estate because there's so much friction um, in that industry. And I love real estate and I love um, uh, what, what we did in, in Colombia uh, and Puerto Rico, but I'm very focused on environments that don't have that same amount of friction because inside video games, for example, inside the metaverse, you're able to start using DeFi, uh, decentralized finance, right now. There are games with 100 million people who play that game who have tokens that can uh, land and borrow and stake those tokens. So we essentially have countries of people that are already um, adopting the, this technology. So to make an investment to wait uh, to try to pick the next currency, maybe an XRP, for example, the banker's coin, the New World Order coin, uh, you know, to, to hold that and wait and speculate that that's going to uh, be the, the big thing. It may be true, but how, how long are, we, are you going to wait to see that happen, right? And I think the same thing will happen in real estate. And that's why I'm, I'm happy taking my time to go fully into this space right now uh, because there's no friction. Um, the, it may be years, uh, you know, even though we've had the first, uh, you know, we're starting to see the first transactions happen in real estate. You're able to buy an NFT that represents um, a piece of real estate. We're starting to see that happen, um, but I think it's going to be a couple years before uh, owning an NFT truly represents ownership of a property on the title deed. Right. Like I think we're we're a while away from uh, the the escritura in the notaria 33 in Bogota um, being able to be bought and sold with an NFT. It may happen sooner, but I, I, I think it's a couple years at least. Um, so I'm going to be diving here and maybe we'll swing back through real estate down the road. Um, but I'm just updating you guys on my journey. Um, again, not financial advice. Uh, I'm just sharing sharing my journey, what I've seen, um, the successes I've had so far in this space. I'm going to be diving in deeper uh, and I'm essentially going to be looking for uh, a, similar, a similar thing, a, creating a similar value that we did uh, in Colombian real estate. And that was cash flowing assets that generate passive income, that generate freedom of time and freedom of finance. So as I dive into this, uh, into this space, I've actually got a map uh, which I'll be using to make sense uh, of what's happening. Um, it'll, this is still a bit out there. I know this is a little uh, confusing for a couple people, but don't worry, it'll make sense. 
uh, as we start navigating this unfolding digital unknown. Uh, the concepts and the words, um, if you don't know them, um, drop them in the comments. I'm happy to help out uh, to help you start seeing uh, what is happening um, because we do need new words and new concepts uh, to understand and, and see uh, see how this is all playing out. So to sum up what my strategy is, I'm going to be hunting down hype cycles, these cycles of hype, these, these massive uh, speculations, riding those, uh, those waves of speculations, right, with strategy, making sure that I'm taking profits on the way up. Uh, I'm going to be hunting down passive income plays. Where are these assets? What are these nodes of the networks that we're going to be using uh, that we can own and start generating that passive income to give us that, that financial and time freedom so we can spend more time uh, riding around the world on motorbikes and jumping into waterfalls, okay? So we can spend more time embracing our fears because our fears determine what dreams we can even see. So I invite you to embrace your fears so that you can embrace new dreams and start creating the future now. I'll see you guys in the next video.